Despite the decline in shipbuilding, the connection with the sea remains strong. The biggest employer along the west coast is the Royal Navy. Her Majesty's naval base here at Faz Lane is the largest military establishment in Scotland. It employs a workforce of more than 6,000. The Navy's presence here dates back to the First World War. The depth of the locks and their ready access to the Atlantic Ocean made this an obvious choice for our most important submarine base. And since the 60s, that no longer means just torpedoes, but intercontinental ballistic missiles. Each of these boats is capable of delivering more destructive power than was unleashed in the whole of the Second World War. Faz Lane stands guard over Britain's entire nuclear arsenal, a force that comprises four Trident submarines. Our historian, Neil Oliver, has been given privileged access to join the crew of Trident submarine HMS Vanguard. As we're escorted out, the submarine has to negotiate the shallow waters of Loch Gerloch, Navigating a 150 metre long, 16,000 tonne nuclear submarine is no easy feat. Overseeing this tricky manoeuvre is Captain Jake Moores. We've just left the Gerloch and uh, coming down through the Rune Arrows where we have about 40 yards of clear water either side and about uh, three and a half metres of clear water underneath the submarine. And the submarine itself is uh, over 100 yards long. There isn't a lot of space to, uh, to turn her as we come through the Narrows and out here into the Clyde. What is it about Fast Lane that makes it so special? Fast Lane's in a unique position within the UK on the uh, west coast of Scotland. It's a deep water harbour that's well protected with uh, quite a difficult uh, navigational entrance and exit. Uh, and also provides us easy access to the North Atlantic and uh, quick access to get out to deep water. And in addition, the, uh, the locks in the area provide us with uh, deep water where we can conduct trials and uh, training uh, without having to go too far. It's been over three years since HMS Vanguard was last on patrol. As the oldest of the UK's four Trident submarines, she was taken out of service in 2001 for a complete overhaul. But before she can resume patrol duty, both the crew and the submarine must survive a series of drills. I've joined the crew at the start of a gruelling set of sea trials that will test the ship and, more importantly, our men to the limits. For the past two weeks, Captain Moores has been preparing his crew for the first of those tests. Ready to dive. Pipe, diving now. XO, dive the submarine. Diving now. Diving now. Their underwater patrols last three months, during which time no one sees anything of the outside world, not even daylight. With such a vast array of complex equipment, a lot can go wrong, and the crew must be capable of sorting out any emergency themselves. But the real fear that haunts every submariner is fire, which, hundreds of feet below the surface, can quickly turn lethal. Three men have been airlifted from a Canadian submarine which is stranded in the Atlantic. Last year, a crewman died and eight others were injured on board the Canadian submarine, the Chicoutimi, when a fire crippled her and left her adrift in open seas. No wonder they take these drills in such deadly earnest. To make sure the crew are up to scratch, the Navy's own team of inspectors plant a series of simulated fires throughout the submarine. Here we go, assessment day has come and there's like a real sense of tension running right through the ship. It's very exciting. As soon as any emergency occurs, the officer's mess rapidly transforms into damage control. The heads of every department are present here, from the chief weapons engineer to the chief medic. Doc, any information on casualties? This is the nerve centre during any crisis. Meanwhile, it's the crew's job to tackle the fire. The pace of the day is relentless. 
With one fire under control, the test team set off others. In such confined spaces, speed and teamwork are essential. The fire is out! The fire is out! The submarine was struck by a submerged container. Please, incidents have occurred throughout the submarine. Putting two fires which are now out, that's all. Although the drills and tests are now over, the crew can never relax. Is it possible at all to get away from the day job while you're on active service? I mean, can you, can you switch off at all? No, while we're at sea, you can't switch off. Uh, if something goes wrong inside a submarine, you're in an enclosed environment underwater, and you've got to deal with it very quickly, get it right, otherwise uh, there could be problems. And that's why we train so carefully for it. Well, they've passed the first big milestone, but it's easy to forget that for the crew, this is just the start of a long process. For them, it's more practice, more assessments, more practice, more assessments for the next 12 months until this ship is finally declared fully operational.